Hello and welcome to the CMC Market Non-Farm Payrolls Friday webinar on Friday the 6th of April 2018. <clears throat> Excuse me, the time has just gone quarter past 1 p.m. BST, British Summer Time, 1.15 p.m. UK time. And this is the Non-Farm Payrolls spe uh, uh, webinar special. Uh, as always, with all of our webinars, what I'm going to do is I'll leave the risk warning screen slides on screen here for you to have a read through. It's all fairly straightforward. It essentially states that anything that is covered in this webinar is only my own personal views and opinions and thoughts and comments, and they should not be construed as explicit trading or investment advice. Uh, while you're having a read through those, uh, those, those slides, it's all fairly straightforward. Uh, I'll just have a quick chat about what's been going on in the markets. And in terms of the volatility in the last few hours, it's actually been very, very quiet. As always, it's not from payrolls, it's not from Friday. Uh, it's very common to see uh, little or no activity or little volatility uh, in, in, uh, in the run up to the actual all important jobs report, which are out in about 14 minutes. Uh, in terms of the re recent news, uh, obviously, overnight, uh, the, the main kind of topic of the entire week has been the the kind of the pending or a possibility of a, of a full-on trade war between the United States and China. Um, yesterday, China uh, turned around and stated uh, they're look, that they're looking at um, they're looking at retaliating in relation to the to the to, into the relation to the U.S. U.S.'s um, ta uh, imposition on them. And then overnight, we've heard that uh, Donald Trump stated um, that the uh, that the United States are looking potentially considering. Another hundred uh, hundred billion dollars worth of uh, imports on Chinese products, and this is sort of a, this is exactly how, unfortunately, trade wars work. It's sort of a, very much going kind to of tit for tat, back and forth, and all the all uh, and it's and it usually sends traders into into a bit of a panic, and, and often puts a bit of pressure on equity markets. Now, granted, when that was announced, it would probably be, would have been the early hours uh, in London time. It would have been kind of I think it was half twelve or half one happened uh, in. Uh, in the early hours of Friday morning in the UK. Um, when that happened, we did see a quite a substantial sell-off in the Dow futures and also uh, index futures of other markets around the world. But things have recovered somewhat. Uh, they're not, things aren't uh, any, by, any means, uh, any, by any means rosy, but they are certainly uh, a, a bit more positive than what they were. It, it would appear that the fear factor has evaporated somewhat. And we have seen this as, as quite a common theme recently, whereby... The initial reaction is quite bad, and then once it actually sinks in, it's a different story because yeah, it's worth noting that this, for the time being, is all just talk. The uh, the move by China yesterday on the last 48 hours, those tariffs um, won't actually come into play for about 60 days. So that leaves a window for negotiation, whereby the United States and China can sit down and have a chat about to look at readdressing the trading imbalance between the two countries. Speaking of trade... Yesterday, the United States had, had trade figures out yesterday, and the trade deficit increased for a sixth month in a row, and it widened to its largest level in nine and a half years. So, uh, Mr. Trump, whether you like him or not, has a point in that there's a very much an imbalance of trading between the United States and the rest of the world. And when you delve down into those figures, you can see that number one, in terms of you know countries or continents or trading areas. Uh, number one, the, the largest area that, that the United States has a trade deficit with is with China. And number two, the European Union. And there you go. China is in the firing line. And the, the, the European Union has been exempt before now. But we all know what, what Mr. Trump is like. He likes to start off quite brash. And then he can actually uh, back down or make, have, a, have a somewhat meet in the middle. And I suspect that's what he's doing. And I think... That's what traders are kind of cutting on to as well. That the initial reaction sounds quite quite severe, and then what you have as a, a, what you have afterwards is a bit of a cooling of tempers, and all this, the, the two sides will come and meet together. Like if you look at, he, he, if Mr. Trump appears to be a bit softer on NAFTA than, than when he once was. Now that would obviously the alteration to the to the NAFTA agreement would obviously have a big imposition on both Mexico and Canada, who sell a lot to the United States. But once again, if Mr. Trump talks tough initially. That could get a reaction from the various heads of gov heads of government in both in both Mexico and and Canada, and that's how Mr. Trump would actually probably would rather do business rather than actually going down have the route of having to have a full blown trade war. He'd probably talk like he's having he's willing to go uh, like he's a, a full blown trade war. And the way he go carries on on Twitter, he might get, intentionally be giving off the impression that he is a bit of a loose cannon and 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 that. And ultimately, 
uh, it's often met in the middle. These things often these things can take quite a bit of time, but the situation appears to be the common theme seems to be that a move happens, a, a political announcement is made. It is quite a large a reaction from the financial markets, and, and on the flip side of that, what you end up seeing is some spot of a of a cooling of, of tensions. In relation to the uh, to the non farm payrolls, let's take a look here at, the, at our economic calendar. For those of you who don't know, our economic calendar can be found under the Market Pulse tab, and it is the fourth option down. Taking a look here, we can see here at the headline figure we're expecting. We can see here, um, it's this is it here. New unemployment, non farm payrolls, half one. We can see here that we're expecting 193,000 jobs to be added in the month of March, and that compares with 313,000 that were uh, added in February. So we have a big step down. But to be fair, anything in around the kind of 200,000 mark is fairly good. Is is, is seen as, as quite positive. Uh, economists uh, have stated the United States needs to be adding at least 200,000 jobs per month to actually kind of keep the economy ticking along. So if even if the number comes in bang in line, somewhere in around the 200 mark will be deemed to be quite positive. Now, I've, I've said it before and, and other non-farm payroll webinars, and I always put it uh, in, my, in my market commentary uh, and analysis on the day of non-farm payrolls. The devil is in the detail. It's quite common for the market to react solely to the headline number, this which is, which is the main number I just read out here. Everyone's focused on the 193 number, but what we but there are several bits of information released at the same time. This first of all, this previous number of 330,000, for all we know, that may be revised higher or maybe revised lower. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Revisions to the previous month's number. Second, second on the on, on the list is the unemployment rate. Uh, unemployment rate is tipped to fall from 4.1% to 4.2 to, to, to 4%. And in terms of uh, earnings, which is which I think is the real the real key, um, on, on a monthly basis, average earnings in the US is expected to tick up by increase by 0.2%. And that, that compares to the previous month's rating of, of 0.1% increase. And in terms of the on a year year on year basis, on the average earnings is, is tipped to increase by 2.7%. And that compares with a previous month's rating of 2.6%. In my view, the devil's in the detail. And all the information, the headline figure, the revisions, if there are any, the unemployment, and also the average earning figures, they all need to be taken into consideration. Uh, my view is that trade that the market often has a knee-jolt reaction to the headline numbers, and then the other information sinks in. And it's not unusual for the headline number to be, say, either really good or really bad. The market moves in a certain direction, and then there's a realization, oh, ho hold on. Things actually aren't as rosy as it actually seem. You know, looking back at last month, you know, looking at uh, over 300,000 jobs, painted a very rosy picture last month. But then you take a look at the average earnings, for example, and they were solid. They were, they were fine, but they were they were they were they were, um, they were declined from the January figure, um, and that was just that, that kind of tempered the mood. So don't necessarily get too sw too too swayed by the headline number because more often than not, headline numbers get revised. Uh, so the, the my view is that the report should be taken as a as a whole, and then actually fully digest the numbers, and then draw conclusions from there. Uh, what also is um, is worth is is, uh, is worth noting. Yesterday we had the U.S. jobless claims. This is the people who are who are claiming unemployment benefit in the United States. That came out yesterday, as it does every week uh, on Thursday at half one. That ticked up from two hundred fifteen thousand to two hundred and forty two thousand. And that was a larger than expected increase. They're expecting the increase by 10,000 to 225,000. In the grand scheme of things, it's fair enough. It's not good to say that. Not good to see that the uh, jobless claims rate ticked higher by, you know, nearly, nearly 30 odd thousand. But in the grand scheme of things, it's actually still respectable, seeing as that the um, jobless rate in the United States is at, is at multi-decade is near enough multi-decade loads. A few a few thousand here or there isn't really going to rock the boat a whole lot. Turning our attention now um, to Wednesday's ADP private sector employment numbers, we can see here that there were 241,000 jobs created uh, in, in the month of March and, 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 the, and the ADP private, uh, private sector employment role. That was well above expectation. There's only 205,000 jobs to be created. It sinks in nicely with an economist's view that the United States needs to be adding at least 200,000 jobs per month in the payroll. And if you look at 
the uh, the previous month of 235. So it's an improvement on the previous month's reading as well, ever so slightly. So things are looking quite positive uh, in, in that respect. So traders would have viewed the better expected, not the better expected ADP numbers. Took a look at the slightly worse than expected ADP figures, but realized that they're still overall fairly good. And this will kind of set the mood for today's non-farm payroll. But if you take a look at the kind of the wider context of what's been going on in U.S. economic indicators, we saw the core PCE uh, uh, indicator last week tick up. Um, if you look at various different, say, um, surveys in terms of customer, in terms of uh, consumer confidence, they're quite high. Some of them are actually, are actually multi-month highs or multi-year highs. Other economic indicators, such as manufacturing and such as housing in particular, are quite strong. They've come off the ball ever so slightly. Uh, they're maybe not as high as they were uh, two, three, four months ago, but they're still broadly uh, in, in quite good shape. Um, bearing in mind the Federal Reserve uh, raised interest rates last month, the language of the Federal Reserve seems to be that, that we could be heading, that we could be looking at another potentially two, possibly three more rate hikes. From the Federal Reserve in 2018, but obviously today's numbers are going to be uh, of major importance. Janet Yellen, the ex-head of the Federal Reserve, uh, only said in the last 48 hours that she expects that we could see three or four rate hikes in 20, 2018. That's all well and good. Uh, it, when the uh, um, when you're actually out of the hot seat, it's easier to give your views and your opinions uh, as, as straightforward as that. But it's I, I say that uh, which is, which is actually the case. But also I say that because it's often seen Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve currently, is, who has taken over from Ms. Yellen, is seen as sort of a Janet Yellen. Is seen as a as a person not not too dissimilar to Janet Yellen. So if Ms. Yellen's looking is commenting saying three or four rate hikes this year. That could suggest that uh, Mr. Powell is thinking along the same lines. Obviously, he's not going to just just fit in exactly with what his predecessor did. But the, the market has views him as somewhere, someone along the same lines. He's only in the job a few months. He took over in February. I doubt he's going to be in any rush to actually kind of uh, ruffle any fe feathers. It's likely that Mr. Powell is going to want to actually just, just get his feet under the, under, the, under the desk and actually suss off the line of the land um, for a few months before actually kind of going, before having any, any kind of major terms, changes in terms, of terminology, in terms of terminology or language or tone. We've got about two minutes left before we actually have a, have the figures uh, come out. The Fed have stated that they are focused on the economic indicators, and as I said, the economic indicators are broadly fairly positive. Um, there's, you know, there's arguments to be said for four, 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 four rate hikes this year, but there's also arguments to be said that four is too many and keep going with keep going with the kind of the, the, the last couple of years only three rate hikes. One minute left. Wait for the numbers to come out. Um, for those of you who use a, who use a trading platform, by looking at the market pulse tab here, what you can do is, if you uh, want an indicator to always pop up on your screen, what you can do is this this alert here. If you, if you click that alert, that means it'll be kind of permanently set that every 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 time that that economic indicator comes out every month or every week, whichever one it is. Uh, will always automatically pop up on your screen, so you don't necessarily have to wait and be, be tuned in because it it does pop up on your screen. So I'll have the the, the alerts all set up for the non-farm payrolls, the unemployment, and also the actual um, and the and the earnings figures. So we're just waiting now to see what the kind of market reaction is going to be, what the figures are going to be coming out now. So take a look at the headline number. That was a colossal miss. I just want to ch double check on my rotor screen, on my, my, my rotor terminal on a different screen to ensure that that was the accurate figure. One hundred and three thousand uh, is the is the uh, was the figure um, when they were expecting one hundred ninety one hundred ninety three thousand. That seems quite low to me. Um, the, the on, on the flip side, the last month last month's number of three hundred thirteen thousand was revised higher to by ten thousand. Uh, also looking at the uh, on average earnings, average earnings um, on a month month of, on basis increased by 0.3%, an improvement on the 0.2% that was expected. And looking at on an average earnings on a year on year basis, the kind of more important one to look at came in at 2.7%, bang in line with market expectations. I'm just going to very quickly um, look at a, my Rogers terminal on a different screen because I just want to really be sure that those um, headline numbers were actually the, the numbers that we're looking at. 
in terms of the, the reaction from the markets. Um, yes, 103,000 is what was fed through in terms of the non-farm payrolls report. It's uh, quite a considerable, um, um, quite a considerably below expectation. This is an enormous drop compared with the previous two months, compared with the previous month. But you know, I know there's a lot of chaos, and you can see the price of gold is uh, is shooting up. And I can see here uh, that the US dollar index is lower. But as I said at the top of the webinar, the United States is to be adding around 200,000 jobs every month to be ticking along nicely. And bearing in mind, last month's number was 326,000 because it is revised higher. And now we're getting just over 100,000, which is poor on the, on the, on the top of on, on the head, on the, at face value. But it's still on average 200,000 jobs per month. When you amalgamate the two, it's probably it's probably it's still a fair it's still reasonably good not amazing but reasonably good and this is a classic example where the, I think the markets are going to be too focused on the headline figure but also unemployment did, did take up as well that is something that is, that is something to be uh, um, to take note of as well so I would say this is, this is clearly isn't a particularly good report headline number was 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 weak was very weak the unemployment ticked up. The only thing, only thing I'm positive I can say is that on a month-on-month -month basis, the average earnings ticked up, but the, but the yearly one, which is the one people really focus on, came in bang in line with expectation. It's good to see more Americans are uh, are 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 are, are, um, are getting better, are, get, are getting paid slightly better, but ultimately it isn't uh, it isn't an overall good report. Uh, I think what we're going to what, what, what we'll do now is I'm going to look at look, take a look at some of the market reactions. Um, I'll take a quick look now at the Dow futures. I'm always a bit um, not skeptical, but hesitant to kind of pay too much attention to what's going on to, with, with the markets immediately after the number has come out because there's a lot of always to and fro. I look at it on a, on a, on a, a minute basis. We can see here that the numbers came. The numbers came out at this candle, at this, this one bit of candle here. The initial reaction was, was was down, and then it pushed higher. And it does appear that we're actually we've, we've, we've taken off the lows of the uh, of the um, of the of the candle when the numbers just just about came out if you look at this uh, we can see here that the market did uh, was going through quite a bit of volatility but there we go you know the, the numbers are not for a few minutes we can clearly see on a minute chart that the market is heading south I'll take a look now at the S&P 500 I suspect it's going to be a similar situation on the S&P 500 so for those people you thinking about what's, what's the kind of state of, 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 of American equities We've had a series of lower highs uh, for that in, in recent weeks. So I'll, I'll show you the kind of big, big snapshot. We can see here that the, the market has been in a fairly obvious downward trend here on, on the S&P 500. Similar looking chart on the Dow Jones. The market's edging lower here. Fair enough, it has popped higher on this occasion. So it's re recouped some of the ground that was lost here. But we take a look now at a minute, minute chart. And now we, we can, you can see here, once again, this is when the figures came out here at exactly half one. And now we're actually already below the lows of the half one. The numbers only came out four minutes ago. The markets may, may digest this and think to themselves, well, you know what? When you combine the two months report together, it's still okay. Not amazing, but okay. But the initial reaction into the downside. Just uh, one second there, please. So I think in the, in the very near term, I'll, it's likely to see pressure uh, on, on U.S. indices. Trading in our non-farm non payrolls is obviously, is obviously quite high. Is obviously very is obviously a bit, is obviously quite high risk given that the volatility and what's going on in the markets. I, as, I, as I said, this isn't a good report on its own, but I think the market might try and convince itself that the, that the report combined with, with last month's report isn't too bad. Uh, and for that reason, what we could end up seeing is we could end up seeing a scenario whereby the, the market isn't as worried um, about as initially let on, if that makes sense. So I'll take a look now at what's going on with the US dollar. So the big picture on the four, on a four hourly chart here. The US dollar yesterday, uh, it, well, this morning hit its highest level in over a month. And as you can see now, the market's coming off on the back of that. This is the US dollar index. Take a look now at what we, what we can see here. Bam, major sell-off. Uh, nothing was going to seem to be positive uh, in terms of the U US dollar outlook. 
So, if you put, put bearing in mind, if you look at on a, on a one hour chart, the US dollar has been doing fairly well recently, so a bit of a pullback isn't an entire surprise. I suspect things aren't as bad as they initially seem. Uh, so, I think we could see a bit of a turnaround in the US dollar in the next few hours, just like we could see a turnaround, or we, we could see a push higher in US equity in the next few hours. I don't think it, I don't think it's necessarily going to be anything enormous, but I think the we, we may have seen the kind of worst of the reaction in that the people might look at this month's number and go, you know what, when you take into consideration last month's number, it isn't overall that bad. One market which has been very uh, correlated with, or inversely correlated with the price of um, the US dollar has been the gold market. And the kind of big picture over the last few months, uh, say from say December onwards, has been broadly to the upside. Uh, we have taken up the low, we have created a lower low here. But the, in recent weeks, so the last say five or six weeks, the price of gold has been broadly kind of pushing higher. And if you look at the uh, if you look at the moves on the back of the uh, the on payrolls number, it's also pushing higher on, on, on account of it. This was kind of put the, with with numbers like this, unemployment rising, uh, poor, poor headline number. That would really kind of put, put traders thinking, you know what, we're probably not going to have um, the Fed probably aren't going to be rushing out raising rates in June. And for that reason, we're seeing a, a push higher here in the price of gold. Now they mentioned the gold on, on, on certain days when the, when the equity market has been under severe pressure because of uh, the uncertainty around the potential trade war, gold has managed to do quite well. I'll take a look now at a couple, a couple of uh, current popular currency pairs like the euro dollar and the pound versus US dollar. So, over the last few weeks, we can see here that, that the even though the euro has been doing fairly well against the U, against the the, uh, the the US dollar in the grand scheme of things, we can see in recent weeks throughout 2018 it has been edging a bit lower and it's kind of always kind of run out of steam around the kind of 125 level. And looking at on the kind of a shorter term basis, what we can see here is that it has been edging lower here. But now that the euro is actually probably doing well on the back of the of the, the latest figures, we could see a, a bit of a continuation. Of the of the recent of the recent kind of sell off. So taking a look at it, taking taking a look at this, this level here, we were pretty much on. Um, one of the kind of areas to keep an eye out for is this this uh, area here. It's in around the 122.40 level, and we're just north of that at the moment. 122.40, uh, which is with the exact low from late March, is 122.39. We're trading ever so slightly high of that at the moment. If we can remain north of that, it's likely we could see the euro push on higher from here. Given the the, the, the sell-off in the U.S. dollar, and also it would be a resumption of the wider trend. And uh, the big picture trend uh, like that is means it's more likely to continue. But that being said, it, the, the euro has found it difficult. Once again, I get the euro gets say gets north of the 50-day moving average at 123.35. We could be looking towards 124, and then the, the late March high of 124.76. But notice how the euro has found it difficult to get to get up towards the 125 level. I take a look now at pound dollar. Um, what's going on on that? So the pound versus the US dollar has been a solid upward trend over the last 12 months. Um, we can see here that recently enough, we have a, this this move here recently is appears to be a bit of a pullback in, in uh, when compared with the kind of wider uh, that, that the the move here that happened largely in the month of March, push higher from here. See a bit of a pullback. It appears to be resting on the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in at 139.87. If we can hold above that level, we could be looking heading back up towards 141. And we can see here that the market ran out of steam in around the 141 area. And if you go north of 141, the next level to keep an eye for the upside would be 142.44, the late March high. But even if the, the the market does manage to drift a bit lower from here. We could be looking at getting support in around the 139 area. We saw a lot of consolidation in around 139. Um, and if you, if you, even if you do manage to go south of 139, in around the kind of 137.50 ish. If you did look at the this trend line here, we can see that that 137.50 ish would be in around that trend line. So while we we, we remain north of that trend line. And for those of you who want to know, that is the trend line from the lows of March last year to the lows of August last year. Granted, in November, it traded south of it a couple of times, but then actually make a decisive move through it. 
if you draw a trend line from there and if you remain north of that trend line i suspect the outlook for pound versus us dollar is going to remain positive it's only if that trend line is, is broken then we actually look to get a bit worried on the back of this uh what i'll do now is it's uh i'll look to take a look at the at the uh, at the FTSE 100 if there are any markets that you want me to have a, have a look at or comment on that i haven't already commented on feel free to just uh, stick that in the chat box but bearing in mind there's only a few minutes left uh, on the on for this webinar so we'll be, I'll be looking to wrap things up fairly soon um taking a look now at what's going on on the um taking a, on the FTSE 100 we can see the big picture that the FTSE has had a quite a decent uh, sizable sell-off uh, in 2018 the market is pushing higher here yet again it appears to be running into resistance at the 50 day moving average which comes into play just in around the kind of 7200 mark which is basically where we are now if the market's moving higher we can see positive momentum on the rise so, so, the, so the, the upward move is being confirmed by the positive by the increase in positive momentum but while we remain south of the uh, of the march high of of uh, 7256 I suspect the the market is going to is um is could turn over on itself potentially uh, but but if you do break north of 50 to 70 50 to 56 we could be looking heading it back up towards the late March February high of 7340 and if you go beyond that the big the big psychological number of 7400 would then be in play and 7400 is is also important because it actually coincides with the 30 moving average but if we do see the market look to actually run out of steam here and if it turns out that this this upward move is only a bounce back in the wider uh series of bounce backs that we've had the next area to keep an eye out for the downside where of course is 7100 and then of course a big psychologically important 7000 level if we go south of 7000 we could be looking heading back down towards 6839 i'll take a look now at the dax and then i'll look to wrap things up Right, as you can see here, the DAX has also had a fairly a fairly rough uh, 2018. After losing serious ground in like late, late January, early February, it hasn't really managed to actually kind of snap out of the, of the, of the downward trend that it's been in. It's firmly below the two day moving average, which comes into play here. So the outlook is quite, it is, remains negative. That being said, it did manage to hold, hold north of this support area here. Uh, this price action of it being around 11,000. Uh, 700 there thereabouts 11,692 or 11,700 as an area uh, as you can see a class example of lower high so so I suspect we could be looking at heading south again uh, on, on on the DAX and, and should it, should that be the case the next level to watch out for the downside will be the kind of psychologically important 12,000 and if you go south of that down towards 11,800 and if you go south of that look towards the 11,700 region and if you go if you go below below 7,000 because that this area here 7,800 that would create a new low for 2018 and that in itself would actually be quite a worry and it could point could point to head back down towards levels not since February of last year uh, in around the um, just south of 11,500. What we need to be doing is we need on the DAX to kind of shake off or negate the negative trend that we've been in recently. We need to kind of first of all probably. Cap well, head north of the 50 day moving average, which comes into play at 12,390. But then also, you would want to be taking out the March highs, uh, which come into play just shy of well, there, thereabouts at 12,500. 12,475 would need to be taken out before we can actually even begin to consider should we be looking heading higher. If we do manage to go north of there, we'd be looking heading back up towards 12,600. And if that were the case, you could then get, get, get a sense of fear that we, we might actually target the journey moving average. Which comes into play at 12,671. Well, that's all for me this week. I hope you enjoyed this week's non farm payrolls a webinar. It's going to be on the market insights section within the next hour or so, and market insights can be found under the trading trading pulse section and the second tab down. I want to point out that we also have a webinar, uh, the Monday market webinar. Uh, you, you can feel free to sign up for that. That's on the Monday coming. I'll be giving that webinar, and that will be on at 12:15 BST, British Summer Time. I do want to thank you for your time and your patience. Have a good trading week and good luck.